first. I'm Jen Wolf. That is Nick Wright. Brian Westbrook is joining us this morning. Good morning, Good morning. Brian. We're matching again. Well, that's how we do it here. I mean, first. It is always a great day to have Brian Westbrook. It is particularly today. I was just scrolling my Twitter feed. I'm like, oh, they're talking about Brian Westbrook. Oh, that person's talking about Brian Westbrook. Your name was all in people's mouths yesterday, Brian. I'm excited to have you How here. did I get involved in that? That's just the biggest question. Sitting at your palatial estate in Brooklyn, <laughs> minding your own business. Waiting for Zion to right. come on, and just, boom. So I mean, like, I'm getting drawn into this old stuff again so we'll get into that today uh that plus by this time next week nick's miami tan will be just settling oh, in that's a fact we <laughs> will be gearing up in the casino for safe of both 54 <laughs> uh we got so much great football to get to uh that only one thing could derail that just for a bit and that is the one thing these guys were talking about the debut of 19 year old phenom first overall pick projected oh, super superstar Zion Williamson. Pelicans hosting the Spurs last night, and after a very quiet first three quarters, Zion figured it out all in the fourth. He scored 17 straight points during a three-minute span, including going four for four from deep. Zion finished with 22 points and seven boards in just 18 minutes of action. Pelicans lose, but that future is bright in New Orleans. Here is Zion after an electric debut. It was everything I dreamed of, uh, except for the losing part. Um, just the energy the crowd brought, um, the energy the city brought. Um, it was electric, and you know, I'm just grateful that they did that. How relieved are you just to get this over with, and now you can go to some level of normalcy? Man, it's not going to be normal, fam. It's going to be normal. It's going to be normal, bro. The way he played is something that he can do every day. Honestly, um, it, we're here to, to obviously help him and, and for him to contribute to us and, and help us out, too. But um, again, I feel like with, with him being back, he, he's waited a long time for this and, and he's really excited to play. Speaking for Zion. I, mean. I like him. He's cute. And he's humble. And I know it's the very, very beginning. And there's a part of you that hopes he always sort of stays a little bit naive. Uh, but, you, you, you know, you don't know. Nick, do you think Zion exceeded expectations in his debut last night? Oh, given the minutes restriction, he did as well as you possibly could have done. I, the greatest of athletes, and Brian can speak to this from experience, me just from observation, can feel the moment and channel something a little extra special. And Zion, after being out of basketball for a few months, after, and anyone, you don't have to be a great athlete to know this, anyone that's played basketball at any level knows the way he was playing, where it's three or four minutes in, then to the bench, impossible to get a rhythm. It is impossible, if you've been a starter your whole life, if you've been a big time player your whole life, what they were asking him to do, it, once I saw how the minutes restriction was going to go, oh, it's not that they're going to let him play a nine-minute chunk in the first half consecutively and a nine-minute, they're going to go four minutes, four minutes. I was not surprised at all that the first three quarters went the way they did with him turning the ball over, being a little uneasy, not being able to find a groove. It would be like I imagine a running back that's used to getting 25 to 30 carries being like, you're going to get eight carries, you're mm -hmm. not going to know when you're going to get them. And so I didn't think we were going to get this, but I shouldn't have doubted it because he is a phenom. He's not just phenomenal, he is a phenom. And what he did was, after playing in this game for three quarters, seeing what San Antonio was doing, seeing what his team needed, he in his first game ever as a pro did something that former number one overall pick Ben Simmons to this day refuses to do. Did something that it took Giannis four years to figure out that he could do it and really didn't figure it out until this year. Man, if you don't dare me to shoot, I'm gonna shoot. And because he was injured, he said he spent a lot of time working on that set kind of flat shot. And what he did was, in his first game ever, put his team on his back, pull them back into the basketball game, and if he was allowed to play longer, they would have won that game. He would have scored I, easily 25 points in the fourth quarter of a close game if he didn't have the minutes restriction. It was the exact way a player who I believe is going to be an all-time great, his career should begin with an all-time great debut. 
it's funny that you mentioned that because my whole thought when I watched the game was that, you know, coming into the game, I said it's going to be very interesting to see how they integrate him into the basketball game. And really, early on, they didn't call any players for him. For him. They try to make him get his points off the board, just find a way, just float around offensively. Then in the fourth quarter, he was like, okay, this is enough. I'm going to take advantage. And you're right. That's what superstars do. They say, it's my time to shine, and now I need to do everything to help my team win. That's that clutch gene that everybody wants the superstars actually have. The, the one thing I love about this team, coached by Alvin Gentry, is that you have, usually when you have the number one player, you go to the worst team, and you just got to try to find a way. LeBron in Cleveland, they just not about a lot of, lot of very good players around him, and LeBron had to carry this basketball team. But this team, the Ingram can score. He's a consistent scorer. Drew Holiday, Lonzo Ball can handle the ball, get great shots for everyone. Zion doesn't have to come in and carry the basketball team. That's probably the best thing for him as, as a rookie. You know you're going to be a superstar. I don't have to come in and do everything right away. That's going to be a great thing as far as the longevity of his career. Well, and this is, and I think this is the smarts of David of David Griffin and Alvin Gentry. And I don't know how many people noticed this, but did, in the introductions, in, in the NBA, the star of the team is introduced last. Mm -hmm. And if there's two stars, the, the second best player goes first. They introduced Brandon Ingram first. They introduced Drew Holiday last. They kept what they've been doing. Zion was introduced second. You might say, why does that matter? It matters for the same reason that he went to the podium with Drew and that Drew, a veteran, a very underrated player in this league said, hey man, this is gonna be normal for you. This is gonna be every night for the next 15 years. Get used to it. What the scrutiny, the intensity, the eyeballs on you. So they know he's gonna have to deal with that, but they're not upping the ante with it by, they're not, no, 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 listen, Ingram's having a great season. Drew Holiday's our best player right now. You're, you're one of the guys who's a starter and nothing more, at least in that. And I think that's smart because he's, Jenna, you mentioned you hope he keeps the naivete to a degree. He almost assuredly won't because he's gonna grow up and we all grow out of it to a degree. But he's a kid. Yeah. Yes. He, he's, he's younger than my son, who is uh, right now, I, I, th I wonder how, someone five years older than Zion should deal with this type of moment. And he's dealt with it as well as you possibly can, including saying to Gentry, coach, we can win this game, leave me in. And credit to the Pelicans, they did the right thing. You gotta think about the 15 year window uh, for his career and taking him out. But I thought it was great. I thought it was awesome to see, I thought it was great. One of the biggest things when we talk about Zion, you really compare him to Ben Simmons, first of all, pick as well. The fear of failure. To me, the fear, fear of failure has kept Ben from yeah. shooting those jump shots and kept him from saying, I don't wanna shoot anything outside of the lane. In Zion's first game, he said, listen, coming into the NBA, the question was my jump shot, my ability to shoot the three. He's willing to step up, line it up, four for four from the three-point line. That was impressive. You talked about the eye test. I'm just curious because we hadn't really seen him in the last couple of weeks. How did he look to you physically? We worried about his weight and what would happen if he wasn't playing every day. How did he look to you well, eye test? I don't think his weight's in, in, any bigger than it was. Now, if people want to argue that he needs to get smaller than he was in college, I don't think he's really done that to a degree. He, he looked like winded. He, after his first four minutes, he looked winded. I don't think that's because he hasn't been training. I think that's just because you haven't been playing in NBA games. But I think Brian, the, the eye test of that he was not afraid to do the thing that he is worst at on the court. In fact, both those things, he was a willing passer early. He's not a great passer. And you saw it in the turnovers, but he was trying to defer. He was trying to do the right thing. And he is not a knockdown shooter, but it was to, you know, one of my favorite phrases, the right basketball play. If they are gonna go under screens and dare you to shoot, the lane's gonna be too clogged, so put them up. And if you're making them, keep putting them up. And it is, his comps are, you know, Blake Griffin, as far as when he came in the league. I mean, it took years for Blake to be to start shooting three pointers. We've talked to Blake about I had to reinvent it. I'm not acting like Brian Zion's gonna be a knockdown shooter, but that he will be a willing shooter if they dare him to shoot. That is going to open things up for him and for everyone on this team. It was after a preseason, remember, where he averaged, what did he do in the preseason? 23. 23 in 27 minutes a game on 71% from the field. First game ever, 22 in 18 minutes on 72% from the field. And by the way, Zion had never had more than three three-pointers in a game at Duke. He hits four last night in three minutes of play. So he's off to a great start. Much more on Zion coming up. On the other side, though, back to Super Bowl talk. How disappointing would a Super Bowl loss be for Nick? Uh, for Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> I'm sorry. Here from Mahomes next on FS1. You can always check us out on the Fox Sports channel on SiriusXM. We'll be right back.